Day three in 2.5, operations with rationals. So today we're going to multiply and divide. And again, you can follow along in your text and also follow along in your notepad that we're starting on page eight, and it looks like this. In the text, we're on page 106 through 110. So either one of those places, but I would like you to follow along in the notes packet. So it says, um, you may use, you may use a calculator to complete the problems below. Analyze the pattern. Analyze the pattern. Come up with some thoughts. What kind of a pattern do you see? Be prepared to make a connection within the rows, meaning across the paper. So how is this division related to this multiplication? See if you can make a connection between the two of those. And also making a connection within the column itself. So what's happening as you go down this column? So I would like you to pause the video now and actually complete this page. Make some notes in the margin of things that you see. On this division side, make a note about that. What happens? What kind of patterns are you seeing? So complete this page, make some notes, and be ready tomorrow to come into class and share those in class. So push the pause now. Okay, welcome back. So now that you've finished that page and you've made some notes on it, please turn to page 9 in your packet. And again, we're still in 2.5 in the textbook, multiplying and dividing. You know how to multiply and divide fractions. You know how to multiply and divide mixed numbers. Now we're going to see integers mixed in with those. So we have to apply our rules for integers. If there is one negative or an odd number of negatives, as in this example, in the product, our answer is also going to be negative. So negative 3 fifths times 25 twelfths is equivalent to negative 5 fourths. Simplifying that, because I know 4 goes into 5 and that's an improper fraction, you would get negative 1 and 1 fourth. So I wrote a couple notes on here. Let's talk about this problem. I'm going to walk through this problem. Um, you can see that they, when you are multiplying, Yes, we are going to work horizontally across, not vertically, because you're going to multiply the numerators, negative 3 and 25, and you're going to multiply the denominators, 5 times 12. However, and you can see in this next step, it says, according to the Singapore model, divide the numerator and denominator by their greatest common factor. We call that cross-canceling. So cross cancel, 5 and 25 have a factor of 5 in common. So take it out, 5 divided by 5 is 1, 25 divided by 5 is 5. 3 and 12, also numerator to denominator, have a 3 in common. 3 divided by 3 is 1, 12 divided by 3 is 4. And you can see that lightly in this example here, that they've done this cross canceling. So I've taken both a 5 and a 3 out of the numerator and denominator. A 5 and a 3, I've taken 15 out of this product. Um, and you would see that if you didn't cross cancel first. So that's the GCF. The GCF is really 15. We call it cross canceling and we do one factor at a time. Numerator diagonally across to the other denominator numerator diagonally across or down to the other denominator. So the ending result is negative 5 fourths. Had I not cross canceled first, and you can do this problem without cross canceling first. So I'm going to, and if you want to copy this, you may. Um, negative 3 fifths times 25 twelfths. Say I don't see that they have 3's and 5's in common, and I just go ahead and multiply. One negative in my product is going to give me a negative. 3 times 25 is 75. 5 times 12 is 60. Oh, I'm going to have to take some common factors out of there. Well, I know they both divide by 5. 
I also know they both divide by 3. So why not factor out a 15, which is their greatest common factor? So when I take negative 75 and divide it by 15, I get negative 5. When I take 60 and divide it by 15, I get 4, which reducing that gives me, because 4 goes into that 5 one time with 1 left over, remainder of 1, so negative 1 and 1 fourths. So I can either cross cancel, which forces me to factor first, or I can factor second and cancel by the greatest common factor afterwards. It's much easier to do it this way, to cross cancel first. With mixed numbers, you must write them, must write them as improper fractions first. So, um, and let's go over this because you haven't seen this with negative numbers. Just uh, forget about that negative one that's out there. Forget that there's a negative out there. You're going to do it just like it's a positive. So kind of cover up that negative one. Five times one is, and it's just one, five times one is five plus three gives me eight fifths. Now bring that negative back onto it. So it's not, and sometimes kids mix this up, so pay attention. Sometimes kids will do five times negative one is negative five, negative five plus three, oh, negative five plus three, that gives me negative two, and they put it over the denominator of five. Well, negative one and three fifths is not the same thing as negative two fifths. So forget that this negative is out here for a moment while you're making it improper. It's still the same as if it was a positive one and three fifths. Five times one is five plus three gives you eight fifths. Bring the negative along. So they've converted negative one and three fifths to our eight fifths here. Negative eight fifths and four and three eighths to thirty-five eighths. Eight times four is thirty-two plus three, thirty-five eighths. Then cross canceling. Five can come out of five and thirty-five and you can see you have one left here and seven here. And um, our eights, oh, eight cancels with eight. So we have a one and a one in our numerator and denominator. So we have negative one times seven, which gives us our negative seven in our numerator, and one times one in our denominator gives us one. Well, negative seven divided by one is negative seven, final answer. Complete. So uh, I don't like all this little spacing, and it's probably too small for you. I'm going to work over here a little bit in the margin. Uh, multiply the numerators, divide the numerator and denominator by their GCF, and simplify here. So here's my steps. I'm going to work right here because these little boxes here are easy to work in. 3 sevenths times 7 twelfths. Well, very easy to see that I have 7 in common in that numerator and denominator. I also have three in common that I can cross cancel. Three divided by three is one, 12 divided by three is four. Now I multiply across my numerator, one times one, one, one times four. Don't forget your negative there, that negative that's outside here. And the product is negative one fourth. We have a mixed number problem here, number 17. First, write it as improper fraction. So again, don't make that error. It's not 3 times negative 3. 3 times 3 is 9 plus 2 gives me 11 thirds. And again, I'm going to work in this space here. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 2 is 12 fifths. Hmm, 11 and 5 do not have any factors in common. But that 3 and 12, they have 3 in common. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 12 divided by 3 is 4. 11 times 4 is 44. And 1 times 5 is 5. And I had 1 negative in my product, so my answer is going to have a negative on it. And yes, that's improper. So 5 goes into 44. 5 times 8 that's 40. I need four more to get up to 44. So I have eight and four fifths. Bring my negative over. So negative 44 fifths improper fraction is the mixed number negative eight and four fifths. Four fifths is in lowest terms, so simplifying that. 
So let's do a couple more together here, a couple more multiplication problems, and then we'll get on to division. Um, negative 2 ninths times 27 28ths. Well, I know my answer is going to be negative because that one negative here in this product. 9 goes into 9 once, 9 goes into 27 three times, 2 goes into 2 once, and goes into 28 four times. So I get 1 times 3 is 3, and 1 times 14 is 14. I already brought the negative over, so 3 doesn't go into 14. They have no common factors. So that's in lowest terms. My answer is negative 3 fourteenths. Number 19, you have to make it into improper fractions first. 15 times 2 is 30, plus 2 makes 32 fifteenths. Negative 32 fifteenths times 8 times 3 is 24 plus 3 is 27 eighths. Also negative. So I know my answer is going to be a positive answer. Let's see if we can cross cancel anything. Well, I see this 8 and 32 relationship. 8 divided by 8 is 1. 32 does have a factor of 8 in it four times. 15 and 27, they have a 3 in common. So 15 divided by 3 is 5. And 27 divided by 3 is 9. 4 times 9 is 36. And 5 times 1. I purposely write above my factor so that it doesn't look over here so I don't get it mixed up with this 32 that I have here. I write my factors above so I can clearly see 4 times 9 up here and 5 times 1 down here. It's not mixed up with the other things that I'm crossing off. So you leave, your, leave space for your work. Don't squish it too much. So 36 fifths, and it is positive because a negative times a negative is a positive answer. So 5 does go into 36 7 times. I have one more to get up to 36, 7 and 1 fifth, positive 7 and 1 fifth. And if you're having trouble with making this improper fraction into this mixed number, make sure you ask me in class tomorrow. Make sure I stop by your desk and go over that with you. So 36 fifths is the lowest term answer, 7 and 1 fifth. So going on to the next page, you can see that we're going to do division. Last thing in 2.5. So 4 fifths divided by 8 fifteenths. Well, we don't multiply or we don't divide when we divide fractions. We actually change the problem to multiplying by the multiplicative, one of my favorite math words, multiplicative inverse. You guys call it this. Um, you're going to multiply, you're going to change this problem to multiplying by the multiplicative inverse. You're going to invert that second fraction, 8 fifteenths. So, yes, we keep our negative, negative 4 fifths, still is negative 4 fifths. Divided by 8 fifteenths is the same thing as multiplying by the multiplicative inverse, 15 eighths. Then you can see here that they cross-canceled the 5 and the 15 and the 4 and the 8. I have a little 1 here, a little 1 times 3, you get 3, and 1 times 2 is 2. Well, you can't leave it improper like that. You're going to write it as a mixed number, and it is negative because 1 negative in the division gives you a negative answer, negative 1 and 1 half. What if they're both mixed numbers? Well, you must write them, must write them as improper fractions first. So 3 and 1 fifth is 16 fifths. Bring that negative over. 4 and 4 fifteenths, that's 64 fifteenths. So I'm going to make, and please do this. Don't skip this step. Make them both improper first. Then change the problem to multiplying by the multiplicative inverse. Negative 1 negative in your quotient is going to give you a negative 3 fourths. So let's try a couple of these on our own, a few of these. Hmm. One half divided by three tenths. And then they moved it and used the old-fashioned division sign, one half divided by negative three tenths. So one half, keep it, 
change it, flip it. I've heard you say this, so keep it, change it, flip it. I'm going to keep the first fraction one half. I'm going to change the problem to multiplying by the multiplicative inverse. The multiplicative inverse of 3 tenths is 10 thirds. And yes, it is negative. So I know my product is going to be a negative answer. Because now I'm multiplying. 2 and 10 do have a factor of 2 in common. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 10 divided by 2 is 5. I get negative 5 thirds. Well, I can reduce that to 3 goes into 5 one time with 2 left over. Negative 1 and 2 thirds. In lowest terms, that's the correct answer. My first fraction stays 7 twentieths. Change it to multiplying by the multiplicative inverse. 15 fourteenths. And that is negative 15 fourteenths. And it doesn't matter if the negative's out front in the numerator or in the denominator. We saw that before on 2.5a. It's still a negative fraction, a negative number. So our, my answer, because I have a product with one negative in it, is going to be negative. So I go ahead and take care of that first. Now I'm going to cancel my common factors. 7 goes into 7 once, goes into 14 twice. 15 and 20 have a 5 in common. 15 divided by 5 is 3, and 20 divided by 5 is 4. So 3, 1 times 3, that gives me 3. 4 times 2 is 8. Notice I didn't say 1 times negative 3 because I already put that negative out here, so I'm good with that negative symbol. And yes, the answer is negative 3 eighths. 3 and 8 have no factors in common, so they are in lowest terms. They're relatively prime to each other is another way to say that. They are related by primeness. They have no common factors. That's negative 3 eighths is that answer. Negative 4 and 1 6 divided by positive 1 and 1 9. Make them improper first. 6 times 4 is 24, plus 1, 25, 6. Now make sure you ask me if you need help with converting between mixed numbers and improper. Must do this. So negative 25, 6. And I am going to leave it as a division problem first. 1 and 1 9 as its improper fraction. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 1 makes 10 9. Now I'm going to change it to negative 25, 6. Keep the first one. Multiply by the multiplicative inverse, 9 tenths. I know my answer is going to be negative because of that one negative in my product. 10 and 25 have a 5 in common. So when I divide by 5, I get 2. When I divide by 5, I get 5. 6 and 9 have a 3 in common. And say you missed it. Say you didn't catch that 3. It's okay. You'll catch it over here when you're reducing the fraction here. You'll probably see that your numerator and denominator still have a 3 in common because you would get 45 twelfths. Oh, they both divide by 3. But I do see it. I do see that they 6 and 9 have a 3 in common. So I'm going to factor it out here first. So 6 divided by 3 is 2. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 5 times 3 is 15. 2 times 2 is 4. Negative 15 fourths is easier to uh, reduce than 45 twelfths. So um, negative 15 fourths, 4 goes into 15 three times. 3 times 4 is 12. I need 3 more to get up to 15. 3 and 3 fourths. And my answer is going to be negative 3 and 3 fourths. Ooh, long lesson. That's it for today. Be ready. Come in with some of those great ideas from our first Analyzing the Pattern page. And if you have any questions about improper to mixed or mixed to improper, bring those with you too. See you tomorrow.